the experience that he gained, they expect him to have become a director or something like All that. Right. You know? But the experience that he had, you know, is just incredible, you know. And these people, are, well, but they, they choose to be in the field. They love to be in the field. Mm -hmm. And I think in this country, perhaps we should also maybe not look down on people if they choose to stay in the field, you know, in broadcasting or in journalism or anything like that, you know. Arnold, thank you very much sir, okay. for coming to the show. Yes. Thank you, sir. Right. Thanks, Friday. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> It's going to be a wow. And someone else is in the house, Dr. Tolo Ajayi, who will be, talk, he will be reviewing a book on broadcasting. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, um, this is um, a very interesting book, in fact, because it gives us a little bit of the background of um, broadcasting, uh, what happens in the studios, and then the people that the broadcaster met, because this man was one of the pioneer broadcasters in England. And he was in broadcasting for over 40 years, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting book. The book, uh, the author's name is Harry Carpenter, and the book uh, he calls it Why? Why is uh, Harry? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll explain the title a bit later, you know. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, the um, there are lots of photographs inside, and um, we're going to look at the people. He was a sports broadcaster, one of the very first sports broadcasters in England at the time. Can you have the cover of the book, please? You know? And then, uh, you know, uh, that's the cover of the book there. There he is with Frank Bruno, uh, the British boxer, you know, the uh, first picture. And then, of course, then um, uh, he met a lot of different people, you know, in sports, from Mike Tyson to Muhammad Ali to, um, uh, to um, Sugar Ray Robinson, Randolph Topping, and then in tennis, he covered tennis, Bjorn Borg, John McEnroe, and he covered um, uh, he, he covered um, golf as well, you know, you Jack um, Nucleus and uh, Arnold Palmer, all those people, you know. Uh, and of course, sports figures in those places are just like show business figures because they're usually very uh, glamorous. Um, the, um, you can see a picture of him there with Mike Tyson at ringside doing commentaries. Um, you know, they are wearing headphones and of course you may wonder why they are wearing earphones. And that's because um, when they are doing commentaries like that, they have a, um, a director who's talking to them. The cameraman has, uh, has earphones on as well. The commentators have earphones. So the director is telling them, do this, do that. Camera, there are usually about 15 cameras covering an event. Camera 12, move closer, show us the boxer's face. Uh, camera 13, you show us the referee. There's a cut on uh, the face and all that. Then the ringside doctor. So and that's what, and if you, um, the, the football is what most people will know. When they have all these cameras, you see that as soon as the goal is scored, uh, the person, the camera focuses on the player's face running away. Then he calls camera 15, focus on the, the goalkeeper, looking as though he's just lost his mother and all that. You know. uh, yes, and, and this is um, Matt Tyson and Brown Bruno and uh, Don King in the center, some of the people he covered in that time. You can see Bruno is wearing a, a, a dark suit and a white shirt. And in Britain and in Europe, is, is the way to look like a gentleman. See the way Tyson is dressed. So uh, Bruno has this gentleman image, you know, and Tyson, um, of course, nobody likes him, whereas they like Bruno a lot, you know, because he, he's, he's such a gentleman. And of course, Bruno is British, so Carpenter knew him very well. He's supposed to be objective when he's doing commentaries, but the time Bruno fought Tyson, and Bruno hit Tyson a good shot, he shouted, come on, Frank, hit him another one, he's almost gone. And of course, the producer had to tell him, hey, take it easy, you are taking sides, you're supposed to be neutral and all that, you know, and that was the only time in his whole career. And of course, because um, Bruno was also his friend, and that's what you see in, um, um, in, in doing commentaries. Um, the other page, the other page, and that's uh, Muhammad Ali and Henry Cooper, but the other page you know, is what we need. Those two twins, you know, the, the other picture is, um, you know, where that, that is a picture, we're going to see it in a moment. It's a picture of um, two gentlemen, and you, you're not seeing double because they are twins. They are the Cooper, yeah, there they are, they are the Cooper twins, and I know Nigerians are fascinated by twins. And they, they are so, um, the left, they are both boxers, and the one on the left was the most successful. He fought Muhammad Ali twice. And the way Carpenter learned to tell the difference between them was by noticing that one of them had a gap between his teeth, and his name was George. So he said, uh, G for gap, D for George. They were really so identical that you couldn't um, tell the difference. Um, perhaps next, we'll probably see some tennis players. You know, he also covered 
uh, Bjorn Borg and um, John McEnroe um, in those days. And of course, the interesting uh, character was uh, Jack Nicklaus. When he got to the, the golfer, when he got to the stage, um, the popular man was Andrew Palmer. And that's John McEnroe there, a tennis player, one at Wimbledon, a tennis player covered. Um, the Nicholas, when he got to uh, the stage, he was um, taking the place of somebody called Arnold Palmer, who was very popular. But Nicholas was very fat, and so nobody liked him. They don't like their public figures, idols, to be fat over there, you know. But after uh, he lost weight, because he looked just like Billy Bunter, that was a comic we used to read when we were young, the fat boy there, you know. But after um, he lost weight and he became slim, everybody liked him. He became very popular, and they called him the Golden Bear. That shows you that. Um, Appearances matter a lot in um, uh, in, in um, being a sports idol, and of course you're also going to see um, some. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's Nicholas. That when he was fat, you can see how fat he is, and nobody liked him at that time, you know. Uh, and of course, then um, you will also be seeing some um, uh, some uh, boxers there, you know, a bit later on. But anyway, Carpenter covered all of them, you know, and he, he's, he tells a lot of anecdotes about how he covered them. And the most interesting thing about the book, in fact, the, the most interesting thing about the book is that um, um, Carpenter stayed in the field all through his broadcasting career. He never became the director in the studio. In, in this country, they will think that you've lost your way. If you spend 10 years in, this, in the field and you are still in the field, you know, they believe that um, you should, only young people should be there, you should be a director. But uh, that's uh, Nicholas. After he lost weight, you can see how slim he is there on the right, congratulating another golfer there, you know, and it became popular once he lost weight. That it just shows you they don't like fat people over there, you know. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, um, he stayed in the field for 40 years and he got an OBE. His director in the studio didn't get one. You know, that's an honor from the Queen, you know. And that also shows that maybe some of our broadcasters, some of our journalists, when they shouldn't think it's a disgrace if they stay in the field because they become very good. They become very experienced at what they are doing. You, and, uh, you know, when they just suddenly all go back to the uh, sit behind the desk, you know, they lose all this experience. And I think, in fact, that is the important thing about this book. That's the important lesson of this book, you know, that our journalists, our, our broadcasters, some of them should maybe stay in the field, and we shouldn't think it's a disgrace if they do. Because if you see somebody who's been in the field for a, and he writes, he writes beautifully, or he does commentaries, he does it beautifully, you know, and, uh, you know, I think they should stay in the field a bit longer, and we shouldn't think it's a disgrace, and we should give them national honors if they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being a broadcaster myself, I will tell you, it's not a disgrace being a broadcaster. I know, but being in the field, you know, if you if, if in, 50, in 10 years' time, they still see you in the field, they'll say, isn't that that fellow who was, uh, what is this, still, uh, why isn't he sitting behind a big desk in the office or something like that, you know? But it's, it's the time. Yes, we still have the likes of B.C. Olatilo, the likes of Vinka Krigo are still actively involved. Yes, it's a very good thing, because they're very experienced, you know. You know, the experience that you have, you know, you just can't, there's no replacement. It's an art in itself, you know, being in the yeah. field. It's an art. That's the point I'm making, you know. Okay. And I think that we should encourage people to stay in the field, you know. Okay. Yeah, I want to thank you very much for coming <laughs> on the program. So it's been quite educative and informative, yeah. especially to people out there who are practicing and people who also want to practice the act of broadcasting. And the general public in particular, because yeah. they just see all these pictures, you know, and they don't know how it happens. They just, of course, somebody said, for example, he yeah, enjoys the world the football when the foreign wants more than Nigerian ones. But whereas we cover the Nigerian ones with maybe three cameras, they will have 30 cameras covering the foreign ones. And one is covering the man as soon as he scores the goal, and that is why it looks more enjoyable. And there's a blimp above the stadium that is covering the, you know, showing you the both side view of everything. Okay. So that so it's a good thing that people understand this as well. So thank you very much yeah. for coming on to the program. Yeah. It's been nice hosting. So thank you. Yeah. Does the temptation, Sister Sledge, and a host of others all have one thing in common. They are all members of the Motown family. And Dr. Tuluaja is in the house to review a book entitled The Motown Album. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How nice to have you on the show, sir. Yes, nice to be here. Okay. Yes, in fact, this is a very interesting book tonight for fans of music and this kind of music because they're going to see a photograph uh, of the first publicity picture of the Jackson Five 
Michael Jackson as an eight-year-old, you know, <laughs> it's, good. it's really interesting. Stevie Wonder as a 10-year-old performing, it's going to be a very interesting book. But first of all, let me thank 